Hey guys, happy Friday. Hope everybody's doing well out there. Uh, sorry about no video earlier this week on Wednesday. It was just one of those days. Uh, I didn't think I was just gonna be able to make one in time, so took the day off. But uh, I spent that time doing some research and coming up with today's video. And over the course of the last few videos, we've looked at how to install Pi-hole. Uh, we also looked at how to set up a Mac VLAN. And uh, when I was putting up the polls uh, over the last couple of weeks, people asked for AdGuard. So <clears throat> what I thought I'd do is actually show you a cool way to install AdGuard on a Mac VLAN uh, so that there are no port conflicts, there's no fidgeting with uh, a lot of other stuff. Uh, all we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a Mac VLAN, uh, we're gonna set up a couple of uh, volumes, and then we're going to install AdGuard Home on our Raspberry Pi. Uh, we're gonna do all of this via command line but please don't let that uh, scare you or turn you off from this. It's gonna be super easy. I will have everything listed in the description down below where you can make sure you can follow along with all of the commands that we're going to run. So uh, let's jump over to my desktop here. Uh, here we can see that I've got uh, Portainer up, uh, but ultimately we're, we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time in Portainer, a little bit, but not much. So uh, what we wanna do, uh, the first thing we actually wanna do is figure out what IP address we want our uh, AdGuard container to run on because it's gonna get its own IP address on our network. So what I wanna do uh, is do ARP-A. And uh, basically this is, it's already, what it's done is it's gone on my network and tried to pick up all of the different devices on my network and give me their IP addresses here. So uh, basically like dot one, that's my router. Uh, dot uh, 100 is actually an ad guard instance dot 200 uh, is an ad guard instance um, and then a lot of this other stuff is just stuff on my network so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pick um, dot 150 because um, there I can see right here I've got you know 126 135 172 right in between here if 150 was taken we couldn't use it but it's available so I'm gonna go ahead and use that so <clears throat> the first thing I want to do is open up uh, a shell command over to my server. And then I've got a command here that we're gonna run. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you through what's going on here. So uh, sudo, that's say, give me root privileges. Docker network create Mac VLAN. Uh, that's just saying, hey, uh, use your root privileges to create a Mac VLAN network. Um, <clears throat> this parent is eth0. So the way I got that was I actually went over uh, to, um, uh, to my server, I went to HAL and I went to port 81. And I, of course I had to log in here, so we'll go ahead and do that real quick. And then when I go over here to network and go to interfaces, my device right here is listed as ETH0. Again, that's a zero, not a capital O. So, um, so we're saying, hey, use ETH0 as the parent. Uh, the subnet, uh, this, this, you're going to have to change this most likely unless your network is 192.168.68. Whatever. Uh, you're going to want to replace that dot six, eight with probably a one or a zero, depending on what your network looks like. If you're not sure, um, you can just do IP config, um, in a, uh, just a windows terminal or a windows, uh, command prompt. And here you can see that my IP address is dot six, eight dot two, four. Um, so that's where I got that dot six, eight from that's my network. And then this slash 24 um, is saying, hey, uh, we're going to have 255 addresses available on this subnet. Um, and so we're just, this has to match what your current uh, network setup is, is set up as. So chances are, you're just gonna have to change this dot 68 to probably a one or a zero or something like that. Uh, and the next thing we've got here, uh, let, me, let me actually see if I can stretch that out a little bit. Oops, no, not like that. Uh, no, it won't let me. Uh, anyway, gateway, uh, 192.168.68.1, uh, uh, that, again, that's my router, that's where, uh, that, that, that's where all my traffic goes through, so we need that. The IP range, <clears throat> like I said, we're gonna use .150 here, and that's, I've already put that in, um, but this slash 32 is saying one IP address. Uh, if we look, uh, I don't have the chart in front of me, I don't remember what the URL is, but uh, in a previous video, we looked at a chart that had some, uh, to Mac address uh, prefix explanations and slash 32 dictates one IP address. And that's all we want. We want this to be uh, just just this one IP address of 192.168.68.150. Um, and then at the end, our, our, uh, our, our Mac VLAN is going to be called AG underscore 
Hal. Again, I called it Hal because that's my device name and AG for AdGuard. So that's where I came up with that name. Of course, you can change that if you want to. Um, but I just kind of wanted to explain what was going on there uh, with this command. Again, this will be linked in, or listed in the description down below. So now that we've got all of this sorted, I'm just going to press enter. So it's created that, uh, that network for us. In fact, if we come back over here to Portainer and go to networks, uh, here is AGL. We just created that, so we're good to go there. Uh, we always like to see that. Now, the next thing we want to do is actually create two volumes. Now, a lot of times in the past, I would uh, go over to uh, Open Media Vault and go into my config folder, and I would create a folder in there, and all of this stuff would go in there. But the reality is, we don't need access to any of the information in here. This is one of those set it and forget it applications. Uh, you can do all your configuration and everything you need to do inside the application. So you don't really need to fidget with any of the files. So we're gonna put these just in a couple of containers, a couple of volumes rather, uh, on our boot drive. So first thing we're gonna do uh, is we're going to uh, copy and we're gonna paste, we're gonna Docker, uh, we're telling Docker that we're going to create a volume and we're gonna call it AG work. That's gonna make more sense here in a minute. We're gonna go ahead and create that. And there it is, it created that for us. The next thing we wanna do is create an AG conf. Uh, that's where our configuration stuff's gonna go. So again, we're gonna do that and there we go. <clears throat> so uh, we're almost done, believe it or not, we're almost done actually. So one last command here. Uh, so right here, docker run, we're gonna run add guard home. Uh, the first volume is going to be AG work. That's the first volume that we created up here. And that's been mapped to opt add guard home slash work. Simple enough. The next one, ag conf, same thing, slash is, is mapped to opt slash add guard home slash conf. Easy enough. After that, we've got some ports. This dash p indicates we're going to uh, designate a port. Uh, 53 uh, for TCP and UDP. Uh, those are both for. Um, uh, for your DNS calls. Uh, 67 and 68 uh, are both for uh, DHCP. If you were setting this up as a DHCP router, uh, you would use that. Um, but we're not going to set this up as a DHCP router, but we don't have to worry about any port conflicts because this will be on its own IP address. So uh, we can leave ports 67 uh, right here and 68. We can leave those in there. Uh, ports 80 and 443 and 853 are all dealing with traffic. And then port 3000, uh, that's where our um, our dashboard is going to reside is on port 3000. Uh, beyond that, we've got, uh, we're telling it to pull from this location over on uh, docker.com. So that is our command. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and run this and it's, oops, and it's going to fail and I, it's fine. We're going to fix it, but it's going to fail. Hey, look at that. 443 is already allocated. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to come back over to our containers. Here's AdGuard Home, it created it. Everything there looks good, except that what we need to do is come in here and edit it. We're gonna scroll down, we're gonna to go to Network, we're gonna to go to Bridge, we're gonna to go to AG Hell, we're gonna click on Deploy, and we'll click Replace. We'll give this just a second to think about it. There we go. And right here is AdGuard Home. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at our logs here. Right there it says, go to this IP address and that port. So let's do that. So we're going to click Enter. Here is our AdGuard home. So we'll go ahead and click on get started. Uh, we wanna switch this to our ethernet port. So eth0, that's our IP address. We're gonna go ahead and do that uh, for the admin web interface. Uh, so then we're gonna go to eth0 for our DNS server. We're gonna go to next. Now we get to create a username and password. I'm gonna call it dbtech. And I'm gonna put in my super insecure password like so. And I'm gonna click next. So now at this point, it's like, hey, if you need to know how to do this, this is how you change your DNS settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Uh, I'm on Windows, so what I'll do is I'll come down here to the bottom right, um, and there we go. So I'm gonna click on Network and Internet Settings. That's gonna bring up this screen right here. I'll go to Properties. Oops, not Properties, I'm dumb, not Properties. There we go. Change Adapter Options, that's what I'm looking for. Then I'm gonna open up my uh, this one port right here, um, like so, or not port, but uh, Link. Then I'm gonna to go to properties here. Then I'm gonna find IPv4. Uh, we're gonna double click on that. And then I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna type in 192.2.168.68.150. And then we're gonna go ahead and say, okay. 
Now, it is always a good practice to have uh, a redundant backup somewhere on your network if you can do it. If not, not a big deal. Just know that it's always good to have a backup in case something goes down. So uh, otherwise, your internet just won't work. If, if this goes down, uh, your internet won't work until you replace that uh, that DNS server or tell it to pull from your router. So, uh, so we'll click OK and click OK. And then once we've got that, we'll click Next. And then we'll say Open Dashboard. And there we go. So here we go. There is... Uh, our IP address uh, with just login. Now there's no port because we put that on port 80. So what we'll do is we'll type in our username, uh, which is DB Tech. I hope yours isn't, but mine is. Oops, I typed that wrong. Like so, and then we can log in just like that. And here you can already see I've got 19 queries. So if we wanna make sure this is working, uh, what we'll do is we'll open this up. Uh, we're actually gonna go over here like so. Uh, we wanna do uh, social blade like so. And uh, the thing I don't necessarily like uh, about AdGuard Home is that uh, the DNS queries don't update automatically like it does in Pi-hole. Uh, if we want to get these updated stats, we've got to click that. There you can see there were 23 DNS queries on this page that were blocked um, because there are ads all over this screen, or, or there would be otherwise. There would be uh, one up here, uh, there'd be one here, one here, there'd be one down the side, one down the side. Uh, there'd be uh, one here. There'd be one down here on the bottom of the page. There's a lot of ads on this page, and I get it. They've got server costs to pay for, but uh, but I use this as an example of how to uh, make sure that your uh, your your DNS based ad blocker is working. So so we've got that set up. It's working now. In fact, if I think if we refresh, yeah, it's got some more in there. Here we can see how many queries there were, how many how many were blocked. Uh, it's a great looking dashboard. I actually really like the dashboard on AdGuard better than I do the dashboard on Pi-hole. This just looks more user friendly, more inviting, um, and more modern, I think. So what we want to do next is actually go in here to some of the, and take a look at some of these settings. Um, so you can go through and find some of these settings uh, if you want to. Um, you can enable uh, safe search if you want. Uh, how long do you want to keep your query logs? Uh, how long do you want to keep statistical information? I like to make that about 30 days. That's fine. Um, then we can go up here to filters and go to like DNS block lists. Now by default, there are three installed on here. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, turn all of these on. If you want to, you can go in here and click on add blog list, go to choose from list. And there's a whole bunch more in here automatically uh, that were just there that you can turn on if you want to. Uh, here are some regional block lists. If you spend a lot of time on sites in these countries, uh, about those countries, you can turn those on. Uh, there's this barb block. Uh, there's more information uh, there. Uh, there's actually the, the whole list. If you want to take a look at that. Uh, there's a homepage for it. Uh, so there's where you can get more information about those. We can click save here. Uh, we'll give that a second. Here you can see it's, it's successfully added all of this. And I love this. It says, hey, here's the name of your filter. Uh, here's the URL of that filter. Uh, here's how many rules it's got. Uh, here's the last time it was updated. And what's cool is you can just say, hey, check for updates. Uh, there shouldn't be any since I just installed all of these. Yep, all lists are up to date. That's good. Uh, over here, there though, we can go down to uh, DNS. Uh, we can put in allow list if you want to create your own allow list. Basically a white list for certain applications or certain websites rather. Uh, you could create your own lists and put those in here. Uh, DNS rewrites, you can put those in here. Uh, blocked services, I actually really dig this. Now, <clears throat> you can just block Facebook. In fact, I'll just do that now. I'll click save and I'll go to Facebook. Wait, no, I won't. Uh, just that easily you can block Facebook or Twitter, Snapchat, Skype, Origin, Epic Games. I'm gonna block VK, I'm gonna block QQ. Uh, I'm gonna block uh, mail.ru, I don't use that. I'm gonna block TikTok just because I'm gonna block uh, whatever that is uh, and everything else, good to go. So I'll click save and there we go. So now I've blocked all of these in addition, all of these services in addition to what I've, or whatever was in all of these block lists over here. Um, so they've made it very, very easy um, to, uh, to just be really safe and secure online with this service. They've made it very user-friendly, very intuitive. Uh, here you can enter uh, regex uh, to, to, a, to block certain things uh, with, with commands like they've shown here in these examples. Uh, they've just done a really good job, in my opinion, of making this super friendly. Of course, now over here, we've got our, our query logs um, and you can see 
uh, what's going on here, uh, where the source is, uh, block service was Facebook, safe search. Uh, so all kinds of really good information in here. So you could come in and you could say unblock this for whatever reason if you wanted to, or you could say, hey, block this instead. So lots of granular control in here. So uh, that's how to set up AdGuard, or at least one way to set up AdGuard Home using a Mac VLAN so that it gets its own IP address. And it's it just very, very simple way to set it up. Only takes a few commands in the, in the uh, command line, and then we're good to go. So I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, it would mean a lot to me if you guys would give the video a thumbs up. Really does help my channel grow. Uh, also, if you know anybody who's looking to set something like this up, if you wanted to share my channel with them, especially this playlist uh, where we've gone kind of start to, well, where we are right now, uh, of setting up a Raspberry Pi home server, that would be amazing. Um, and I just also, while we're here, let's actually take a look at this. Since we're here and we can, uh, here is our, our very generic dashboard, uh, but here you can see uh, our memory. We're using 1.4 gigs for all of the stuff that we've got up and running. And let's come back and look at this. Um, here's all of, the, all of the different applications we've got currently running. And again, we're only using 1.4 gigs of our memory. Of course, we've got an eight gig Raspberry Pi here. Uh, here we can see that we're using about 12 gigs of our 250 gig uh, SSD here. Here we can see the traffic that we've routed through. Um, my temperatures are amazing, but that's because this is actually out in my garage. My garage isn't heated and it's kind of chilly here today. So. I think that basically covers everything. Uh, again, all of this will be linked in the description down below. While you're down there, there will be a couple of links that I'd like you to check out, if you don't mind. Uh, those are both ways to support the channel. One is through coffee. That's a one-time tip jar. And then there's also Patreon. Everybody knows Patreon. Uh, I do have a few different levels at which you can subscribe. And a couple of those levels will give you access to my content early when it's available. So if you want to become a patron, there will be a link to that down below as well. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to my patrons uh, for, for helping me month after month. I, I thank you guys very, very much. I also want to give a big shout out to the uh, sponsors of this video series. Uh, Can of Kit for sending the Raspberry Pi. Uh, Argon 40 for sending the uh, Argon 40 M.2 case. Uh, Sabrent for the two terabyte drive and the external enclosure. I'm going to have links to all of the stuff that I used for this build in the description down below as well. So with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.